But let me tell you something. When you when you you know your mate. Amen. Uh you gotta live with her. I don't have to live with your mate. So you gotta do what That's right. pleasing her. You can't I can't tell you how how to please your mate. Amen. I only take I only thing I can tell you is what my wife and I do in our relationship. Amen. Amen. But she said something that a while ago. <clears throat> she said that y'all have to talk the thing out. Mm -hmm. Don't go to bed with hatred on, in your heart. Listen, that is the biggest problem with, with next to the biggest problem with a marriage. Mm -hmm. It's communication. We cannot sit down and have a decent conversation without jumping up, running in the neighbor room, slamming door. Mm -hmm. People don't do that. They, they don't sit down and talk now. They, where is that, that, that breakfast table talk? Where is that dinner table talk? Mm -hmm. We don't have people don't have people that don't anymore. do that anymore. They don't, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's no communication, how in the world can I know what you're thinking? How in the world can I know what you what's on your mind if you don't tell me? That's right. Unless you know you have that. And gift. it's the same way with the children. Yeah. So so what you got to do? You got to you got to communicate. Yes. You gotta keep communicating. Yes. Keep yes. Communicate. My wife and I we don't we we have our little, little eating spot in the house. Mm-hmm. But we, when we are uh, uh, eating, we talk to each other mm -hmm. because that's a time that we can enjoy our food and Amen. enjoy each other talking Amen. and sit there and enjoy ourselves. Amen. But see, most people don't want to do that. Most Amen. people want to grab their, a, a yes. sandwich and on the move. Yeah. I got to no, go. I got to uh, go. Not even a sandwich. Grab the cell phone. Yeah. Grab the cell phone. Tell about our morning, our morning fellowship. <laughs> uh, You'll be surprised what we do in the morning. Amen. <clears throat> My wife and I, we... Well, I get up early. I have to spend some time with the Lord before I get out on, on, on this tedious journey. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I work with people, and if, if I don't be prayed up, you know, <laughs> something might happen. Anyway, Amen. Anyway, I keep so, him covered. So I, I, uh, I, I, I believe in spending time with the Lord. Amen. So I get up early and do what I have to do. That he does. And, 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 and then I, I, I do my post. I post them on Facebook every morning. Mm -hmm. so somebody did, and I hope that if you have been reading it, I hope it's helping you. Uh, and then I, I, I get me a cup of coffee and go out. We have a, a, a what do you call that thing, provision? Mm -hmm. We go out and uh, I go out in, it. In, in, in the provision. We've mm -hmm. got the uh, uh, stream around it. And I sit down and I start praying and I Pray to the other wife. Here come my beautiful wife. <laughs> she come and sit down, and we just sit there together and drink coffee. Amen. Enjoy, enjoy gospel music. Yes. And and and, and but see, when you when you are compatible, and not unequally yoked, mm -hmm. then things like you're that on the easy. same page. Yes, it sir. Easy to do. Yes, sir. Now, if, yes, if, if, sir. If if if, if I was the, just the opposite. They didn't want to do that kind of stuff. When she come out there with that that music, I get up and leave. I have my worship on. <laughs> I get up and leave. But I'm, I'm not. I, I love yes. gospel music. Yes. And and I I, I love my wife too, y'all. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when she come out, you know, I'd be so happy to see her because the reason I'd be so happy to see her because I know again the Lord has made her up. one more Amen. day. Amen. Amen. And y'all, we be up before daylight. Sometimes we sit and we watch. We watch it, and it's so amazing, go from nighttime to daylight. And we're out there, and we're watching it. And that's our time that we fellowship together, and we talk about, um, you know, we talk about different subjects. We talk about the Word of God. We talk about different things. We, we talk mm -hmm. about the vision that God has given us. And, 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 and somebody said, after all of what we talked about, after all of what we talked about, then he get ready to go, and he give me... The task for the day. <laughs> he gave me the task for the day for the Franklin House or for New Beginning Worship Center. Well, honey, we need. I need you to go do this, this, and this. And honey, I need you to go do this, this, and this. So a lot of time when I'm running and rolling, I'm running because my husband gave me a list of errands that I need to get done throughout that day. And um, there, there are some things that I've had on the agenda 
And um, I, I would sometimes forget about it, but by us communicating in the morning, he would remind me of it. Don't forget to go do this, this, and this. So, Mary Couple, let me tell you something. It's important for you to communicate. Oh, it's yes, important it to communicate. You know what? Even if you got a problem with one or the other, say it. Talk it out. Let your mate know how you feel about what they do, how they do it, what they say, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but, but don't be ugly in, you know, in, in what you have to say, sit down with each other. And if say, for example, I'm, I'm going to give an example. That was one time, um, I was still working at the time and it's been some years back, you know, um, when we say we love the Lord, we got to allow the Holy Ghost to correct us. Believe that. I'm telling you, sometime that correction going to come through your spouse. So that was one time I never forget. Me and my, we was uh, disagreeing on something. And I said, well, just forget it. Just forget it. And I flew out the door. You remember I flew out the door and we're going to get in the car. Before I could get to the car, the Holy Ghost hit me. The Holy Ghost hit me and I broke down in tears and I just said, Lord, forgive me. I politely got, I didn't get in the car. I, pol I politely went back around the car, went back inside the house. And you remember this? And I said, honey, I am so sorry B because it broke my heart. It broke my heart that I let, I was about to leave. Like I was and many times y'all something can happen and you don't ever want something to happen. One to one or the other and you leave in that way. And so when I tell you I was, I was, ooh, we, I was convicted before I got to the car and it just hit me and I broke down into you and it was nothing. We just had a disagreement. I can't even remember what it was about, but I remember that I flew back in that door and he said, I said, honey, forgive me. And these words, he said, I forgave you before you went out the door. I don't know why you left out the door like you did. He didn't even know how I was feeling. But that's how the enemy will come, y'all. I'm telling you, if I had gotten in that car upset, mad, and he didn't have a clue, why? I mean, just out of nowhere. And, and something would have happened to me going down the road in rage. What? My mind all over the place. What the world? What in the world? He would have never known how I was feeling. But I went back in when I sit down. Many times something is said. And how the other individual receive it. It can, it can seem as if the enemy can use it if, it's, if they're being ugly with you. But that wasn't it at all. And when he, he was looking at me, he was like, he said, I forgive you. He, but I don't even know what. Listen, y'all, many times your spouse don't even know how you feeling. They don't even know what's going on in your mind. So you got to talk to them. And whatever you do, do not let the enemy win. Do not let the enemy win. I'm telling you. But nobody wants to say, I'm sorry. Nobody wants to say, I forgive you. But let me tell y'all something. We have got to use those words and mean it from the mm -hmm. bottom of our heart. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to say, I am sorry. Please forgive me. And do not let them walk away until they look at you, until you get back in, in, in agreement on things and say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you should not walk away. Heed it. I'm telling you, you don't know what's going to happen in between that time because the enemy, the enemy something else, y'all. I'm telling you, he is something else. Okay, now let's go back to your your scripture. Okay. Now, what's the latter part of that scripture says? What is the latter part? A nagging wife. Okay. Now come come back up further. Then the share a house. Then the share a house. With a nagging wife. With a nagging wife. Mm hmm Okay, listen. That's rough. That's you share a else house mm -hmm. with your spouse. Mm-hmm. Now, when, while you're sharing that house, there will be things going on in that house because you're sharing a house with two different people. All right? Now, as things go on in that house, what we got to understand is that when two people, although you come together as one, you still got two different attitudes. 
but but think about this, honey. In the beginning, you were total strangers mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. you met each mm -hmm. other. Right, right. Yes, totally you, different you, people. You, 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 My you, God. You, you, you're, you're two different attitudes. Yes, there. yes. And it's obvious that attitudes going to clash every mm -hmm. now and then. But you got to, being a child of God, you got to know how to squish that thing down and put God back in the place of that. Kill it. So, but, kill it. <laughs> kill it. Kill the attitude, not the mm -hmm. vision. Kill it. But, uh, That's right. Uh, living in the house with a nagging person, it's, it's, it's got to oh be rough. God. It's got oh to be rough. God. Because oh you don't God. know, you don't know what to do, what to say, how to do it, how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you know that, don't care what you do or what you say, it's it's gonna be something some, oh some, something wrong with it. Oh so what you gotta understand is this: when 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 you got that nagging wife or nagging husband, when he start nagging and start want to complain, you just say, okay, okay. You know it's wrong, but okay. Mm -hmm. And ask God to change him before he do, or she do what he, they come out doing. Mm -hmm. And you'll find out this now. When 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 God changed them, they'll come back and do, to you and say, "But you know you were right. You sure were right. <laughs> you know you were right because yep. God, you can't change them alone. an individual. Absolutely. You got Absolutely. to let God. And if, if if he or she is nagging, you definitely can't get a word in. So why are you trying to talk? Just be quiet. And and not not somebody out there right now. <laughs> you have, you got a wife. I'm you, I, I see you. You got a wife, and she's nagging at you all the time. And oh, you think about goodness. divorcing your wife. Oh my lord! But Jesus, let me tell you something. Jesus. If you, Jesus. the Bible does not say you divorce her, mm. if, if the Bible tell told a person one one of God's children to go back and get a prostitute. Go back and get your wife, and she was a prostitute. Then don't you know God don't want you to be, get rid of your wife? Huh? Don't you know that? So what you got to do, you got to listen. Let her talk. Let her talk. Get, hear what she got to say. She might have some good points. Mm -hmm. And your points might not be worth a dime. But in your mind, I'm right and she wrong. Listen to your wife. Because your wife can tell you something. Oh, wow. Listen to that. Amen. 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 Guys, we want to jump into a few scriptures, and, and we like to always just kind of start off sharing, and then we kind of close out um, in scripture. And, and once again, we just always thank y'all for joining in. And, and Lord knows, all we want to do, the Lord laid this on my heart, is help married couples and those that are planning to get married. But before, thank you, Lord, for bringing this back because I was kind of thinking about this today. Let me share with those that fall in love with a person and they turn out not to be who or what they thought they were. Okay. What, what, what I'm saying is, um, okay, let me break it down like this. A person that goes to church and there's a man or woman that's uh, maybe in the choir. They may be, be, be uh, they may be a pastor. They be maybe a minister, musician on the praise team, whatever. Many times, I've known and have have dealt with this issue that uh, many times people fall in love with the anointing. They fall in love with the anointing on a person's life. Um, they fall in love with who they are on Sunday mornings. Amen. And 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 <laughs> and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they totally different. So I've known people to get married and fall in love with a person. Fall fall in love. Let's say the Sunday morning person. I'm, I'm gonna touch this real quick. They fall in love with a Sunday morning person, but when they marry them, they got to be married to them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> and Saturday, and on Sunday. But in the midst of that, they find out that, let me tell you something, that person on Sunday morning ain't the same person. They're not in the glory. They're not, they're not uh, preaching and singing. The anointing is not high on them um, at home. As a matter of fact, they're very unkept at home. As a matter of fact, they got to shave. 
the woman got to comb my hair, you know, she got to put on makeup and she got to get dressed and all that. Let me tell you something. You're not going to have that every day. That's only for Sunday morning. That's something that they present to others. Am I right about right. it? On Sunday morning. But you have fallen in love with the Sunday morning person. Yeah, I'm going somewhere. You fallen in love with the Sunday morning person and you find out, Lord, this joker crazy. <laughs> What's wrong with this woman? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> she ain't nothing like she was Sunday morning. Because you fell in love with what the individual, what was on the person. Thank you, Lord. You fell in love with what was on the woman, the glory, the anointing. You understand me? But can you handle, God Almighty Jesus, I feel that. Can you handle the real person when they ain't in the pulpit, when they ain't on praise and worship, when he ain't over there on that keyboard? Nah, 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 nah. On that keyboard, can you handle when he ain't when he ain't over there making a beat out of this world on them drums? Come on, y'all. Can you love the real person? Nope. Let the truth be told. <laughs> what's the what's the what the what's the name of the show they used to have to tell the truth? See, see, see. A person, I understand what you're saying. Uh, Sunday morning, he uh -huh. into the glory. In the suit, in the, the shoes. Uh, the shine, Stacey Adams. Shining like mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. But in reality, <laughs> that same glory. Uh huh. Be on him Monday, too. Yeah, honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. But you know what I'm talking about. You yeah. know where I'm going with that. Other way, other way, if you got the glory on Sunday mm -hmm. and don't have it Monday, mm -hmm. you might get it back Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You don't have it Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You're kind of fit. Well, but see, I'm going somewhere else with it. Okay. I'm right. going somewhere else with that. You know what I'm saying? And what I'm saying is get to know who you falling in. Before you fall in love with somebody, mm -hmm. get to know them. I agree with you. You know, 100%. become friends with them. Yeah. Because you might see that side of them. And, and, and you know, and that's why I, I and, and you... You you know the conversation I had yeah. one time yeah. with an individual because they asked me uh, said I need a, 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 a I need the answer from a woman standpoint and so I was asked and I in these words I said I said I've been waiting for you I said I've been waiting for you I said because I want to tell you that that person fell in love with the anointing they didn't fall in love with you mm -hmm. y'all better hear me oh yeah they fell in love with the anointing that that person that's dressed up on that Sunday. You know what I'm saying? And and um then when they had to see that real person to know, and y'all listen, for those of you that look for a husband in the in the pulpit, or maybe looking for a husband in the church, you better get to know people. Get to know people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get to know them. I'm telling you. Because they ain't always got on that suit. Oh, you look the same. I, my hub, who, who asked you the other day, do you ever wear? Dress down clothes. <laughs> One of my, my grandchildren asked my, <laughs> she asked my husband, she said, Dad, do you ever wear, well, no, she didn't say dress down clothes. She said, do you ever, do you ever wear casual? <laughs> uh, I got not even look. I, I know. Uh, but look, 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 this is what I, I want you to understand is that uh, uh, when, when a person is, is 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 trying to impress somebody. Ah, you know that's a different Ooh. side. Come on with it. Come on with out. it. Come on with it. And, and, come and, on and, with and, it. And when you when he when he have an inkling that come on uh, with it in that uh, congregation is it, it, got the eyes on him uh, uh, in, in a luxury way. Here come the show. Here come the show. <laughs> he puts on a a real he or she yeah he or she put on a real good show. Mm -hmm. And, and that is to impress somebody. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you this: the impressing somebody is done is not suitable for God. You gotta do what He said do. It might it might sound so off the wall that to you or to the congregation mm -hmm. that you said, "What in the world happened to me today?" But somebody in that audience needed what you brought mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Because God going to give them what they need. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. not going to let you put on a show that to be putting on yep. a show. It's, yep. it's, it's yep. not, that's not of God. God, is not, does not, God give us what we need when we need it. 
My husband know I keep it real. That's why people ask me when, 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 when we in conversation with friends or whomever, and and I hear uh, maybe a male say, "Man, the the women be after me." I hurry up and shut it down. Let them know they ain't after you. They after the anointing, honey. They just confuse that. I mean, it's just God using you, but it ain't you. They after it's the anointing that they falling in love with. It's not you because I need you to understand you ain't got it like that. You understand me? And so that's what we got to be real with people and let them know that that's God's anointing upon you. It, 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 it's not you. You just the vessel. It, it, it might not. It still might not be anointing. Uh -oh. Well, uh -oh. oh my. Uh oh, it just might be I'm a show. I'm going to sip on me some water. <laughs> it just might be a show that he or uh, she putting on to, to entertain this individual. Yeah. To get this individual interested in them. And that's a seducing spirit, y'all. Yeah, that's all it is. That's, that's, all that's it is. exactly what it is. It's a, a seducing spirit. And a lot of that is taking place right now. And we got to be so, so very careful. I'm telling you. But as I say it, I've told, I've had to share during during counseling and premarital and stuff. But um, even before you go into marriage, this is something that we have added to our premarital um, uh, sessions is deliverance because many times a person has been through so much and whether it be their last marriage or they've been through things and and um they really uh want to get better to go into mm -hmm. their next marriage so many times people have to be walked through through deliverance as well in order to be um everything that God first want them to be and then you Take on a spouse. Amen. So that's something that we have now included because it needs to be. Oh, yeah. It really needs oh, yeah. to be, mm -hmm. you know, because many times um, a person is dealing with stuff and it's hidden. It's hidden. And um, as soon as they get married, it pops out. Amen. That spirit pops out. And so after God created Adam and placed him in the Garden of Eden, he said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper, listen to me, fit for him. That's Genesis 2 and 18. None of the animals would be a suitable helper. Adam needed someone also made in God's image. So God created Eve from the rib of Adam as his helper and companion. Eve was there to help, to comfort, to be as one with Adam. Listen, women, she was there uh, to help, to comfort, and to be as one with Adam. When your husband has gone out and maybe he has worked and he has poured himself out and the last place he, sh he should come home to a quarreling woman or a nagging wife at, at, at home, that should be his haven. A man's house should be his castle. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Oh, yeah. And so you're, you should be the last one the very last one that he got to come home and argue with. I'm going to read that again. Eve, Eve was there to help, to comfort, to be as one with Adam. This was the first marriage between man and woman. God created marriage so that no one needed to be alone. God says here that one purpose of marriage is to provide companionship and mutual help and comfort. Jesus makes reference to Genesis when the Pharisees asked him about divorce. He answered, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, therefore shall a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast mm -hmm. to his wife and to two and, and the two shall become one flesh. So they no longer are two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. That's Matthew 19, 4 through 6. Marriage is a union in which two different, what we was just talking about, two different people, male and female, who both bear the image of God are united and become one. In a marriage, the partners are meant to complement one another, each bringing different things to the relationship, yet becoming as one. Another purpose of marriage is to produce godly offspring, Malachi 2 and 15. 
Marriage brings a sense of stability in home and one where one where children can be safe, can feel safe, loved and prosperous. Um, I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there for just a few minutes. When my husband and I, when we first got married, when we got first got married, and I'm going to share this with the, the young couples that's just, you know, you're, you're arguing about bills and you're arguing because you feel like you're uh, overwhelmed with marriage and, and the bills and this, that, and the other, and you can't seem to get stable throughout things. Let me tell you something. My husband and I talk about a couple that got married and it was in a struggle. Mm -hmm. That was a time, listen, that's why we have the food pantry here, because that was a time when we had to stand, uh, had, had to go to a food pantry. And that was in the earlier years of our marriage. Amen. There were times when, and, and we just going to keep it real. There was time when some of our stuff was repossessed. There was time when we called people to come and get it. But one thing about it, if you love each other, you can stay together and hold on. I'm telling you, and God will stable. You will, you will become stable. I'm telling you, but if you keep going from place to place here, there, and everywhere, you got to start all, all over. You got to start all over. But if you can love each other enough and still have God and see God and get in His Word, I'm telling you, y'all, it can it can last. It can last. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to throw that in there because we haven't always been where we are, and and it gets better as the kids get grown, as the kids get gone. A a amen. I'm telling you, your life get better and better. I'm telling you because you will get to a stable place to where there was a time when you needed stuff uh even the bills were more expensive with the children being home and all that you get to a place and you become stable and you're comfort and now yeah. you can just love and enjoy each other but I've, we've seen many older couples, the kids get grown and gone mm -hmm. and then they get to acting a fool and they end up divorced <laughs> Help, Lord. Second Corinthians 6 and 14 is applicable to marriage. The best marriage is that of two believers. Two believers, y'all. God's desire for this holy marriage and offspring is so that we can continue to share the good news, proclaiming our faith to one another. The Bible paints a, a beautiful picture of what marriage should look like. But as sinners, we stumble. We do, y'all. We stumble. Mm -hmm. We don't always get it right. And, 